I'm looking forward to taking this time to talk with you about a book written in 1898. It was given to me by Valerie Condos Field, the great woman's gymnastic coach of UCLA, when she appeared on my show. And even cooler than that, the book was given to her by her mentor, the great coach John Wooden. In fact, you'll soon see how close this book parallels John's philosophy of success. I'm Barry Kibrick. The book was written over 120 years ago, but its words of wisdom ring true to this day. Prepare to be enlightened by the majesty of calmness. Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible in part by Patreon. Patreon helps creators build and run membership businesses, from podcasters to writers, musicians, artists, and more, with tools that allow their fans to become patrons. More information is available at patreon.com. And by Magic Jigsaw Puzzles. Over 25,000 puzzles and different jigsaws every day to solve. Learn more at your app store. And Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is also made possible by the following contributors. A complete list of funders is available at barrykibrick.com. The Majesty of Calmness, written in 1898 by William George Jordan, and had not only an effect on two great coaches, Valerie Field and John Wooden, but when I read it, it moved me so much that I was compelled to buy dozens of copies for friends and family. And now I want to share its wisdom with you. It begins like this. Calmness is the rarest quality in human life. It is the poise of a great nature in harmony with itself and its ideals. It is the moral atmosphere of a life-centered self-reliant and self-controlled. In other words, <laughs> it's a life I plan to attain, but it still escapes me and many around me, but not at all times and not with all things. Another part of Jordan's definition to attain these goals includes calmness, singleness of purpose, confidence, and conscious power ready to be focused in an instant to meet any crisis. There can't be a soul on this planet that doesn't want to reach the goal set in the majesty of calmness. And the paradox of it all is that according to Jordan, calmness comes from within. It is the peace and restfulness of our depths of our nature. In other words, if we pay attention, close attention, we already possess it, even if we have to search deep within it and within ourselves to pull it out. Now here is the part that's tough, but it's most important. When the worries and the cares of the day bother us, and begin to wear upon us, it's nearly impossible to escape the friction and be calm. And of course, that is when we need it the most. But Jordan says all we have to do is stop, rest for a moment, and let calmness and peace assert themselves. A classic example, as I love to say throughout many shows, of being easier said than done. For whatever reason, we can know this information, but it's always easier said than done. And that's why this book is so important. If you let irritating outer or inner conflicts get the better of you, calmness seems like a distant journey. But according to Jordan, if we study the disturbing elements, each by itself, and bring our willpower and better nature to bear upon them, we could find that they will one by one melt into nothingness. But can we really bring that 
power to our nature. It is definitely the most difficult thing I have to do, and I know there would not be hundreds of thousands of self-help books every year if it wasn't difficult for you. But this is a very different kind of book. And after reading this book, The Wisdom of Over a Hundred Years Ago, I believe we can. And although I have not yet done it, not by the minute I lose any doubt that I can pick up this book and read it again to attain calmness. After all, this book, it's a thin little book. It's less than 50 pages long and well worth the time and effort. Now, here's the real essence behind calmness. Calmness cannot be acquired of itself or by itself. It must come as a series of virtues. It must sprout out of a deep sense of doing good on all levels of life, doing the best work we can do, giving the best love we can give, having the best relationships we can, serving others and in essence, in the truest essence, it's following the golden rule. Now the glow of calmness that will then prevail may be the beginning of the supreme calmness that is possible. And according to Jordan, in some great hour of our life when we stand face to face with some awful trial, when the structure of our ambition and our life work crumbles in that moment, we will be calm, brave, and as he says, most importantly, we will able to be able and able to build again, no matter how many failures, we can start anew. He goes as far as saying this, you can hold them and fold them closely in your arms. Look out undismayed and undaunted upon the ashes of your hope, upon the wreck of what you have faithfully built, and with brave heart and unfalting voice, you may say, so let it be, I will build again. Now, I haven't gotten there yet, but fingers crossed and time will tell. But basically, when I finished reading this book for the third time, I got the inner sense that self-control is one of the true keys to the majesty of calmness. Deep, deep, self-control, but with outward displays of virtue. Another major element of calmness almost seems obvious, but it wasn't to me. And believe it or not, as I said, it seems obvious, doesn't it? It's the absence of hurry. I want to tell you a funny kind of a story that John Wooden, who again gave this book to Valerie Condos Fields, and then she gave it to me. He said something that I think explains this thought very clearly. As the winner of 13 NCAA titles in a row, he had some of the fastest teams in basketball history. But being influenced by Jordan's book, he clearly spoke of the difference between speed and hurry. Speed is the action you take, but hurry implies a lack of defined method, confusion, none of which he thought would make for a great athlete. Hurry is a process. Speed is an action. So in order to know when to put the pedal to the metal, you cannot hurry the process. The process must be slow and deliberate. Hurry never realizes that slow, careful foundation of work is the quickest in the end. Now, in the race for success, we often sacrifice time, energy, health, home, and happiness. And most importantly, 
if we sacrifice honor, then everything that money cannot buy and the very things that money can never bring back will be sacrificed. Now, one place in particular that Jordan feels this happens, and remember, he wrote these words over a century ago, is in the educational system. And I want to quote you his exact words. The educational system of today is a monumental institution dedicated to hurry. Now remember again, this is 120 years ago. So what speed are we pushing our children at during the 21st century? Again, directly from the majesty of calmness. Even the way I say that, the majesty of calmness. It relaxes me. But he says this, children are forced to go through a series of studies that sweep the circle of all human wisdom. They are given everything that the ambitious ignorance of the age can force into their minds. They are taught everything but the essentials of how to use their senses and how to think. Now, let's add that rush to the implementation of what we now call the STEM courses, science, technology, engineering, and math. And to that equation, let's add in all the soccer games and other supervised activities that take place after school and just for a moment, think about what we are doing to our children. Their minds become congested by a great mass of undigested facts, and it doesn't stop. We hurry them right next into college, then into life, and then, even if they have the greatest of educations, are they truly prepared for a life filled with daily changes and decisions? that must be made in a state of calmness? Jordan actually has a witty line about it. It goes like this. He says, education is in a hurry because she fails to do in 15 years what half the time should accomplish by better methods. Now, I have to say this. Although I agree with William about this, I do have a bit of a different take on what the final outcome will be. You see, in my paying job, not this one, I do not get paid for doing this, but I do get paid for working with children and education on an almost daily basis. I make my living by doing educational and professional development videos for teachers, psychologists, business people, and others in a variety of fields. And I deal with a variety of issues from trauma to student success and how a business becomes successful. And to quote a more modern source, the rock group, The Who, you've got to believe me when I say the kids are all right. You see, the ability for us at any age to make the adjustments we must make for our own well-being never stops. No matter how many roadblocks, setbacks, or even the most horrific of situations we may find ourselves in, we have an undeniable knack of bouncing back and finding our equilibrium. Now, while we are undergoing those traumas, it is never easy. There's no doubt about it. But believe it or not, it's not just an opinion. It's an actual fact of physics. It's known as homeostasis, and it occurs within our bodies, our minds, our cells, and even at the smallest level of the atom to the vastness of space. For whatever reason, 
the grand design of everything is to put itself in balance. So no matter how much out of whack we may find ourselves, whether on a societal level or an individual level, we will by nature seek and find balance. So although we do hurry too much, I'm telling you soon, I am going to predict we will slow things down just enough to maintain our own level of homeostasis. For wisdom and Jordan's book, The Majesty of Calmness, is proof itself that a solid philosophy lives through generations and centuries. But now let's go back to a personal level. One of the chapters in The Majesty of Calmness is called The Power of Personal Influence. William Jordan says these words. The only responsibility that we cannot evade in this life is the one we think of least, our own personal influence. But not so much on others or the world at large, but on our own unconscious influence, which when we make the realizations becomes our consciousness and the effect that that has when it radiates outward into the world is amazing. For all of our actions affect all the forces of nature. From human relationships to global affairs, we as individuals have a power. We may not see it or realize it, but once again, science cannot deny it. In fact, the universe itself is mostly comprised of the unseen, and we in turn are forced to be in awe and wonder of what's invisible. You see, life is a state of constant radiation and absorption. To exist is to radiate. To exist is to be the recipient of radiation, according to William Jordan. Here's what else he says. There are people in our lives whose presence seem to radiate sunshine, cheer, and optimism, and around them you feel calmed and rested and restored. And, as we know, there are others, unfortunately, in all of our lives that zap our energy and make us feel anything but calm. So by that very nature, we have duties to others and to ourselves to create an atmosphere that keeps us living at our best. And if there is a fault, that lies within us, we must do our best to master it. But listen carefully. If it is a part of our nature and we cannot do our best, what we must do our best then is find something that fits our nature and master that. The bottom line is to make our influence felt. We must live and practice what we believe and what is right. And no individual, not a single individual on this planet is without influence. It is therefore imperative that we do our best at all times, even though we know that's absolutely impossible. We can never do our best at all times, but it must be be the journey we travel. And one of the primary chapters in the majesty of calmness is doing our best at all times. The chapter begins with these words. Life 
is a wondrously complex problem for the individual until someday in a moment of illumination he can awaken to the great realization that he can make it never simple but always simpler. Again, I can't help it and I know you can't help it, but at one time or another we will face a dark night of the soul and begin to question our role in life. And when we do, we will literally paralyze our own best efforts. Yet living at one's constant best is a constant in itself. It's a constant if we seek true calmness. What we may possess may be dependent on others, but what we are rests with us alone. That's why, in order to develop a true majesty of calmness, we must also develop understanding of the importance of self-reliance. Jordan believes that self-confidence sees the possibilities of the individual, but self-reliance realizes them. Self-reliance also doesn't do anyone any good if it's all by oneself. You see, we can seek help from many sources, but by doing so, our goal is still to become more self-reliant. And that's not a contradiction. Cooperation is a key to our human evolution. Jordan writes that the medicine chests of the world are powerless in all of them, united together, if the human being doesn't reach in and take for himself what is needed for his own individual weakness. We must remember, if we ever, ever are going to achieve a level of calmness, it is only because we are not passengers on the train of life, but the engineers, and that others can do for us is to give us the opportunity And life is a succession of opportunities, whether we see them or not. And remember, if we miss them, we must still live our lives to our best. And we still can hold ourselves up high. And no matter how self-reliant we become or how dependent we become, the one ultimate power we have, and in oftentimes it is the most difficult to emerge, is the ability to forgive ourselves. And one of the most difficult things we face in doing so is our own aging. That constant feeling that we are running out of time. And this not only comes as we get older, but begins just a few years after we start being on our own. I've personally experienced it, and in my early 30s, and it hasn't let up since but it's never too late to recognize truth and to live by it. For the list of guests who did not become great until their later years is long, and it's amazing, and William Jordan lists them all. But now my time is up, and I have to go, and I want to share these things with you. I want to explore more later on, and I'm gonna be doing so via my podcast. So if you ever forget, remember these words, let us ever turn our face toward the future with confidence and trust, with the calmness of a life in harmony with itself, true to its ideals, and slowly and constantly progressing forward their realization. I'm Barry Kibrick. I am so honored you shared this time with me. I raised a lot of issues and there is so much more I want to share with you about the majesty of calmness. but. We didn't hurry, and our time is up, but not over. As I mentioned, I will be doing a podcast on this topic with a lot more details covering additional chapters and shedding more light on the subject. To hear the podcast, just go to your favorite podcast provider and put in my name in the search box. Have a listen, and please subscribe so you can enjoy them whenever you'd like. Also check out my website at barrykibrick.com. There's a lot of material there you may enjoy, ranging from transcripts of our shows to things I will post just for my viewers. Plus, 
You can catch dozens of past episodes that might be of special interest to you. And if you'd like to connect with me personally, please email me at barry at barrykibrick.com with any comments or questions, and I promise to personally respond to each and every one. Till next time, turn all that past with its sad hours, weakness, and wasted opportunities into a light that will shine brightly in confidence and hope upon the future. To become part of the Between the Lines family, go to barrykibrick.com. There you can join our book club, participate in Q&As, catch past episodes, listen to Barry's podcasts, read his blog, and experience exclusive online features, all at barrykibrick.com. Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible in part by Patreon. Patreon helps creators build and run membership businesses, from podcasters to writers, musicians, artists, and more, with tools that allow their fans to become patrons. More information is available at patreon.com. And by Magic Jigsaw Puzzles. Over 25,000 puzzles and different jigsaws every day to solve. Learn more at your app store. And Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is also made possible by the following contributors. A complete list of funders is available at barrykibrick.com.